Hey everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, uh, and uh, what I'd like to do with you today is to just kind of talk about this ecosystem simulator lab that we are uh, working on. Um, the whole point of this simulator lab is to be able to explore what ecosystems uh, sort of naturally do sort of on their own. What are the behaviors of ecosystems? We're not that interested right now in explaining why anything happens. We just want to be able to say what happens um, and, and also what are some of the numbers. So we have some specific goals for this activity. Um, there's also a handout that I have for you. I'm sending this out just to give you a kind of a tutorial on how to use the simulator, either in case you were confused in class or if you weren't here and you want to get kind of a preview of what it is that, uh, that we're doing. So the handout that I have for you, it's also included uh, on my web page, uh, is uh, it's called Ecosystem Exploration Web Lab, and I've also sent this out to you on Remind. Uh, our goals here are to be able to identify how plant, predator, and, play, and prey populations interact in an ecosystem, and also be able to identify the relationships in terms of mass and numbers between different levels of an ecosystem. So I know that you've gotten some education in ecosystems in the past. What we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, explore ecosystems in similar ways that we have explored animals and plants and decomposers. Um, what kinds of things come in? What kinds of things come out? Uh, are there matter and energy uh, transfers, a movement transformation uh, that's occurring <clears throat> between these different parts of the system? So an ecosystem is... Uh, a, a huge system of interactions between plants, animals, decomposers, and also bacteria, and there's other things involved. Um, but uh, you're exploring an, an ecosystem. Now, before you go any further, what I really like you to do is to pause this video, and I want you to look in the informational section of this video. I want you to click on the Yellowstone, Wolves in Yellowstone link that I've included in that informational section of the video. I want you to watch that first. Um, and I, as you're watching that video, I want you to get a sense for um, what did... Uh, removing wolves and reintroducing wolves due to the Yellowstone National Ecosy uh, uh, Park ecosystem. So I want you to watch the video that is included as a link in the bottom of this video. Um, and after that, I want you to come back here and I'll talk to you about what it is that we're doing in the simulator and kind of what does this have to do with, um, with ecosystems. So pause the video, look at the bottom of the, uh, the information section of, of this video right now, and I want you to go ahead, watch that Yellowstone video, and then come back here. Okay, so hopefully at this moment, by now, you have watched the Yellowstone National Park video about the ecosystems and what the wolves did. And uh, what I am hoping that you are impressed by is the impact that introducing wolves had on that ecosystem. And this is just what scientists observed. They observed, well, when we reintroduced wolves, these are all these changes that happened in this ecosystem. The wolves have been gone for 70 years. We reintroduced them in the 90s, and this totally changed the ecosystem of that, uh, of that area. Well, in this simulator that we're going to be working on, I'm sort of putting you at the controls of this ecosystem. You can sort of control what's going on here. Um, so in order to meet our goals, how to identify how plant, predator, and prey populations interact in an ecosystem and identifying relationships, mass relationships, between different levels in an ecosystem, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to this link right here. Now, this link is also in the informational section of this video. So you're going to go to this link uh, you can just click on it in the bottom of the video. It should take you there. And what you're going to see uh, is going to look like this. So what you have is this sort of interaction field over here. You have the, uh, the food web over here. And then you have a graphing space down here. Now, what this simulator allows you to do is to control what organisms are in this food web um, and who do they eat. Uh, and so you have to kind of go step by step in order to uh, introduce and also remove organisms from this ecosystem. And the whole point, I want you to be able to watch what does the ecosystem do in response to adding that organism or removing that organism. Uh, <clears throat> and to start looking at some of the numbers. How do these numbers stack up? How many plants do I have? How many plant eaters do I have? How many organisms do I have eating those plant eaters? How many organisms do I have eating the ones that eat the plant eaters? So we're going to be looking at all these different levels of, of uh, these, these number relationships. So... Um, if you go to my website or if you open the link that I sent you on Remind, this is what you'll find. This is the document. And on the second page, you'll find uh, when it says here, when ecosystems work. Okay, so this is the first one. Is We're going to just look at a bunch of different ecosystems that, that function. And then there's a later section that says when ecosystems crash. And you know we're going to look at certain examples of when you have an ecosystem and you add or remove a certain organism and then poof, you know it crashes. 
So um, you have to set up, if you look over here, if you look at the screen right here, you have to actually set up that ecosystem in the simulator. So to do that, what you're going to do, notice that here we have a plant, one plant, but no other organisms. So we have to set that up in our simulator. So we're going to come over here, and you'll notice there's actually two plants. We want one, right? We just want that light green one. But what we're going to do is in our browser is we're going to click on that middle plant, and it's going to disappear. So now I have this set up. If you look at that ecosystem, it's set up exactly like the one that we have right here. So this says, add plant A, done. Press play and let the simulator run for 25 days and then pause it. So here's how you do that. You'll notice some control buttons up here mid like the, that you'd find in like a DVD player. You're going to click run. And you'll notice the time begins to run. Now, you don't want to run past day 25, right? Since this step says run to 25 days, we don't want to run past that. So in order to do that, I'm going to stop it before day 25, and I'm going to click this button that says step, and I'm going to click it until I get to day 25. So now that I'm at day 25, wonderful. Um, here, the table is asking me how many of each organism do I have. It's asking for the current number of plant A for 25 days. So the current number, to find that, it's really easy. You take the cursor, this thing that's kind of flashing on the screen, and you can hold it directly over a line of the same color as that organism, plant A, and that line tells you how many of those organisms are there at that time. So I know it's probably really tiny on your screen, but on my cursor it says day 25, 10,000 plant A. So that's telling me there's 10,000 organisms at day 25 for plant A. So what I can do is I can come down, I can put that number in here, and you have to calculate the percent of the total. For this one that's really easy, but Let's move on to the next one, and I'll show you, I'll go through here, and I'll kind of do these uh, along with you to kind of show you how do I change this, how do I make this work. So in the next ecosystem, it's asking you to add herbivore A to the community, eating plant A, and then let it run for 50 days, and then pause it. So I have to add another organism, and it's eating plant A. So if I run back over here, I've got my day 25. It says, do not press reset. I'm not going to press reset. Instead, I'm going to click... I'm going to add my organism, click herbivore A, eats plant A. Notice my food web is set up exactly how it's asking me to set it up right here. Herbivore A is eating plant A. So now that I have that all set up, all right, good. I'm going to click run, and I'm going to let that run for 25 more days so that it hits 50. I'm going to stop before 50. I'm going to click step a few times so that it lands directly on 50. If you don't start and stop the times at exactly 25, 50, and 75, what happens is that you're going to get different numbers from somebody else. That's not terrible. It's just we, the best we can, we want to try to have the same numbers so that if we compare our numbers, we know what we're looking at. So now here's where it gets a little bit, a little bit more complicated. We have two organisms in this ecosystem, and this part of this table is asking for the percent of the total. So we want to know what the percents of our different organisms are. I know you know how to calculate a percent, but you might have forgotten the order or sort of, you know, how to do that. So you're going to take some current numbers. So I'll fill this one in sort of for you. So if we look at our graphing space, we've let this run for these 25 more days, we see that herbivore A has got 2,066 organisms. And plant A has got 2919. So I'm going to type those values in here. That herbivore A is 2066, and plant A is 2919. So I'm going to type those in. But now I have to calculate the percent of the total. So to do that, I'm going to show you how to deal with this. I'm going to bring up my calculator. It's going to bring that up on my screen. And I'm going to take 2606 two, or 2066 and add that to 2919. That gives me my total number for all the organisms in this ecosystem. That's my total number. So what I have to do is take each of those numbers and divide it by my total. That's what gets you a percent. A percent, whenever, when you first calculate a percent, it ought to be less than 1. It's going to be a decimal that's less than 1. So to do this, I'm going to take my, my current number for like herbivore A. So 2,066, so I'm going to take 2,066, and I'm going to divide that by my total, which uh, I think was 4,985, uh, I think that's what it was, equals. And so you're going to get this number, 0. 0.414. Let's round it to the nearest uh, to the nearest percent. Now, you wouldn't report this as 0. 0.41. That's not really the percent. 
In order to do that, you still have to multiply this by 100. So if I multiply that by 100, that means that my percent is really 41 if I round to the nearest percent. So the percent of total is 41 for herbivore A. So, so in this case, 41% of my organisms in that situation uh, are herbivore A. They're at 41%. In order to calculate the plants, that's 2919. So I'm going to take my 2919, 2919. I'm going to divide that by my total, which, what did I say, 4985 equals. And so we get about 59. So if we were to round that, we'd say 59. And that should make sense because both of these add up to 100, or at least very close to 100. Uh, they, they should add up to very close to 100. So I have now calculated both of my percents for herbivore A and for herbivore, or for plant A. Now for each table, you have to recalculate that total. So for this particular table, it was 4985. However, that number might be different over here for that next food web. So in order to build that next food web, so I'm going to keep my numbers there. In order to build this next food web, we're going to come back over here. It's asking, add omnivore A to the community eating herbivore A. And if you're ever in doubt, look at what the food web looks like. It shows omnivore A, this blue one, eating herbivore A. So I'm going to run down here. I'm going to click herbivore or omnivore A. It's eating herbivore A. That little line, you're going to double check to make sure it looks just like the one in the worksheet. And it does, right? Line, line, line. So that's all set up. I'm going to run it to day 75 because that's what it says to do. Use my step function to zoom ahead to 75. There we go. So now, once again, you have to add up your total. Hold your cursor over the different values and actually add up your total of all three of those. You can put those numbers into the table. And then you have to calculate the percent of the total. Remember, if you calculate the percent properly, it should be less than 1. It's a decimal, less than 1. Then you can multiply by 100, and that'll give you your decimal, or your percentage. It is possible to get a percentage that is less than 1. It is possible. If it happens, just, you know, round it, report at least one number that's a non-zero number. That's probably what you ought to do. Um, and here it's going to ask you to, later, you're going to add another organism. So now we're going to add our top predator, and that top predator is eating uh, uh, omnivore A. Let it run. Uh, the simulator will stop itself after 100, so I don't have to pause when it hits 100. It will stop on its own. Uh, and so once again, you're going to go down here. You're going to estimate the numbers of each one, and you're going to report those and their percents in the table there. So this is something that you're basically going to have to do over and over and over and over again, right? There's a bunch of situations where you have to do this and redo this. Uh, there's a bunch of thought questions at the end as well. So we're going to have, we had today in class, we're also going to have tomorrow in the lab. Uh, and then whatever you can't get done tomorrow, most of you will probably get this almost done tomorrow. Um, maybe you'll have to spend a little bit of time at home working on this. Important things, use Chrome as a browser. It works better. And just make sure that you're clicking in, typing in the URL properly in order to get to, to the page. Uh, we will have a discussion on these numbers on Monday. Um, we will come in and we'll start talking about what is it that we see happening. Um, but it is important that you try to stay with us and to actually get these these, these uh, uh, tables and, and most of the questions done by Monday. That way we can have a good discussion and start figuring out what kind of things do we observe. And so just kind of keep in mind that our goal here is to be able to identify how these plant, predator, and prey populations interact. So by the end of this activity, you should be able to do that. And then you also want to be able to identify the mass relationships. We're really looking at numbers of individuals, but the mass relationship works out the same. If I've got a whole bunch of plants and only a few herbivores, that means I've got a lot of plant mass and only a little bit of herbivore mass. I mean, they're, they're basically uh, proportional. So I hope that this is helpful to figure out kind of how to use the simulator, uh, whether you were just struggling today in class or if you were absent and you want to know what we were up to, this is it. So I encourage you, please, um, you know, kind of get a start on this. You can download this document from my webpage um, and you can start kind of, uh, you know, working on this. We'll have Friday as well in class and so, or tomorrow. Uh, so just be aware that we will have a little bit more time in class. Um, so again, I hope that this was helpful and that you're able to complete the simulator by Friday at the end of class. Uh, and so hopefully I will see you then.